You might be wondering, why do you see three Jackery portable power stations suspended from a hoist in our garage? Well, the simple reason is this video is about our electric hoist that we installed in the garage. And the only thing you see here is the fair lead and the black piece of plywood that's bolted up to the ceiling. You see the cable running down. You see the headache ball, that orange thing on the hook. You see the hook and the strap. So we put these together. We have a little less than 100 pounds on this dolly, and we just wanted to show an example of what we have for our hoist. Now, a couple of weeks ago, those of you who watched the station, you may remember the Drock power meter videos that we put together. Those are the power meters we have in the garage to monitor our FPL power. That's our electric provider. Underneath that, some people notice that there's a switch here, and it says hoist on it. Turn it off, turn it on. Well, that actually powers the Nutri 1,100-pound hoist that is located upstairs in our attic. And we're going to show that to you shortly. We're just going to pan up to the ceiling here again. You can see that black piece of plywood. You can also see the, the uh, fair lead that's hooked there. Normally, you'll see a fair lead on something like the front of a S, an SUV or a, a four-wheeler or something like that. And it allows you to use a, a winch to pull off of center if you needed to pull 15 degrees over to hook to a tree to pull yourself out of the mud, that sort of thing. We use it here in this configuration because we have a hole about an inch and a half that's drilled in the ceiling into the wood and into the drywall. And we want to protect that drywall so that fair lead, what that does is it just simply keeps the cable in the center so it doesn't damage the wall. If we go over a little bit more, you'll see a brush plate up on the ceiling and then you'll see a wire coming down. You see that two by three that's painted black. It's got a groove cut out of it with a hole saw and a little hook on it. That's where we run our dongle and that is our wired control that we use for the hoist and you'll see that in my hand here see it says nutri hoist it's got two controls up and down and we put a label that said attic hoist on it you look down on the floor you see a chain when we don't have a load on the hook up here we leave the chain on the load and that's to put a little extra weight we have the orange headache ball and we have the hook but we like to have a little extra weight because we want to keep this cable tight to the drum. We don't want it to wrap around itself or get fouled up on the drum because that can really cause problems. So you always want to make sure you just keep good pressure on, on your hoist, put a couple extra pounds and hang it off of there. So that's what we do. So why do we have this and how does it relate to storm prep? Well, let's get over to our list and we can talk about it a little bit here. What we've got is... Just some things to think about when you're installing a garage hoist. We've already talked about the garage hoist switch, and it's a 120-volt switch. We have an electric receptacle set up up in the attic, and the hoist is plugged into it, and that switch that we showed you operates the op, uh, on and off. We installed this hoist for a couple reasons. It allows us to stay healthy. We don't lift heavy things anymore if we can avoid it. I'm nearing 60 years old. My wife is older. So we recognize that we want to take care of our bodies because if a hurricane comes, or in your case, if you're not in hurricane country like we are for storm comes, you want to take care of your body, much like you would use a crowbar, hearing aids, gloves, um, hard hats, whatever you do to keep your body healthy. Because if a storm comes, you want to be able to handle the rigors. So that's where the hurricane prep and the pre-planning comes in. That's why we have a hoist. It's just smart. We wanted to make sure our hoist is located in an area of obstruction free. You have to have an obstruction free environment. And I'll explain it very simply here. In our case, you can see our garage door opener, uh, or excuse me, our garage door rail over there. And our cable for the hoist, you can see runs just to the back of that rail. When our garage door is up, it lands about eight inches to the front of the cable. That means we can freely and safely use this thing. We'll raise the door and lift things and put it on top of our van on a regular basis so it really works out for us that's the main obstruction we wanted to make sure we didn't have an issue with so when you're working you want to make sure you are in an obstruction free zone it's just safer for everything here now that we're back to the list we've talked about having an area free of obstructions we talked about the location of our particular controller now many hoists today come with either the dongle as we talked about which is a wired controller they also come wireless and some of them come with both so you have a choice so pick whatever works for you the biggest thing we'll say is keep those things out of the reach of children you don't want them to reach your stuff again you see that we have our controller mounted high and you also notice that 
when we have our switch, our switch, and I'll pin around to the garage again just to remind you. You see, we keep this thing high, out of reach of kids, and you'll notice our, our panel meters are up high, digital meters, and also the switch for the hoist. We keep it high, out of reach of kids. It's just a smart thing to do. The install location has got to be structurally sound. We'll show you that in a few minutes. You need to ask yourself or ask a friend or ask a structural engineer or whoever and however you want to handle this. If you don't know how to do this yourself, is my building and is my hoist location structurally sound enough to be able to handle the hoist and to be handle a load? And you have to be able to handle the load. In our case, we're good to 300 pounds. We don't lift any more than two or 250 on a regular basis. This is an 1,100 pound winch, and if we were to run it to its full capacity, guaranteed we would pull the roof down on ourselves, and we don't want to do that. The construction of this house is different from when we had the hoist hooked up in our previous house. There, we were able to pick up 1,100 pound loads with no problem. Here, we're limited to 300, but hey, 300 is more than I can lift and more than my wife Mary can lift, so that works. We talked about having some weight on the hook to keep the cable tight on the drum at all times. It's always good to have it uh, set up, and it all depends on what you have for a setup. We talked about the fair lead to limit ceiling and cable damage. We're going to go upstairs and talk about the hoist detail shortly. I can't stress enough, keep this stuff out of the reach of children. They can get killed with this kind of stuff. I'll show you the hoist safety stop switch and why we don't use it in our application. Uh, when we had the hoist set up in our, our former house, we were able to lift generators because we serviced generators for our neighbors. We would lift the generator up with the hoist, and then we'd run a baker scaffolding under it. We would have the braces flipped upside down on the baker scaffold. We built a special little plywood, or excuse me, two by four platform. We would lay the generators down and just made it easy and safe to service them. We didn't have to bust ourselves trying to move something that weighed two, three, or 400 pounds. So that's what we did. So we're gonna run upstairs right now and we'll have you take a look at our setup. So we're headed up into the attic. And the first thing we'll do is go around the corner and show you the hoist. Again, this is a new tree hoist, N-E-W-T-R-Y. We got it off of Amazon. There's the cable running down through a two by six block. Then we have half inch plywood floor. Then we have our two by four trusses down below. You can see the hoist. It's plugged into an electrical receptacle. And that's uh, receptacle number, or the, excuse me, circuit breaker number 27. It's labeled as hoist. It's got a short cord. You can also see the gray cable. That's the wired controller. As for the hoist itself, it's got a little safety switch under here. And the way that works is there would be a flat metal plate that would ride just above the hook. The hook would come up, that plate would contact the switch and prevent the hoist from the cable from running in and damaging the hoist itself. We can't use that setup because as you see, we have a big distance, almost two feet from the hoist down to the ceiling. So we just don't run our hoist up to the ceiling. That's easily how we handle that. Uh, there is a manual control here. If you use this in a portable configuration, You could run one way, run the other. That's how that works. We don't use it like that. We use it with a wired controller, but it's just something to see. Now, if we tilt up just a little bit, you'll see how we're hooked in. There's a two by eight that we installed up into our truss work. We also bolted an eye hook to that, and then the red hook hooks that red eye hook. And that's how our hoist is set up here in the attic. Now, I mentioned 300 pounds, and let's be very clear about what we figure out to be our limitation and what you need to consider if you have truss work in your building. Right here, you can see we have two by four trusses. We've got a four and object up here, and that's a two by eight that we set up. We have the two by eight nailed here with hurricane clips to the front. It's also nailed to the second vertical truss member. It's nailed to the third and fourth vertical truss member. All the load is coming down into the truss work going down through those members, spreading amongst the other trusses, getting spread into the roof deck. The loads eventually go down to the lower cord that runs here underneath the floor. The loads go out to the sides of the garage and the forces get pushed right into the ground. Notice too, because we have a diagonal truss cord here, 
this cord actually takes some of the forces from the hoist and transfers it there as well. So we could probably put more weight on this, but we've limited ourselves to 300 pounds. We just want to make sure that we don't exceed the weight. Now I'm going to come around the corner of our electric lift that we have here and show you the hoist setup. You see again that you've got the the two by eight here and you can see the hurricane clips nailed in. If we go down a little bit, you can see where the force gets exerted down into the floor. And then if we turn to the left, you can see another hook location in the center of the screen and then off to the left, that's where, where we're clipped up into, into the roof area there. So that's how we set it up. And I'll stress it again. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to put a hoist up, contact a professional, contact a friend, do what you have to do. As, a, as an aside here, notice that we have another hoist here and another hoist here. We also have a bunch of manual hoists, uh, chain hoists, etc. And we can talk about those in, in future videos. So here we are. That is our hoist setup in our garage. We have a finished garage. It really looks nice. You would never even know this thing was there unless you looked up. It makes it very, very useful. And we just want to wish you the best of luck if you decide to put a hoist in your garage. It makes things safer, easier to work with, better on the body, and it's a whole lot of fun to have it. Please like and subscribe to this video if it's something you like. Uh, our videos are a little long. We don't do them for views. We do them to get the education out there. And we just hope that we've been able to give you the kind of education you need to spark your interest. Feel free to put some comments down below if you have any questions or if you have any comments about a setup that you have. There are many videos out there on YouTube about hoists, but we haven't seen one with a nice concealed setup like we have in our finished garage. So we thought we would introduce that and let people know that they can certainly do that sort of thing in their home. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon, and we look forward to seeing you on the next video.